Copenhagen Atomics was started in 2015. We work on thorium molten salt reactor technologies. We come from Denmark, not a country likely to fund full build out of this type of technology. So we have to maybe choose a little bit different route towards the technology than some of the other developers from the United States or somewhere else. So what we have been developing is tools to help people build molten salt reactors. It's a loop that allows you to test all kinds of components when you have a molten salt flowing around. Uh, we have tested these loops both with uh, fluoride and chloride salts. Uh, you can use them to test measurement technology, different measurement uh, devices. You can use them to test uh, valves and pumps and uh, heat exchangers, something like corrosion and played out. All these things that you need to test before you build a reactor. So we built this loop to test some measurement equipment in our own labs. But we realized that in order to push for this whole group to move forward faster, we need to share this technology with everyone else. So we provided this loop as a commercial product that other people can buy. And actually, we put it for sale on Amazon. So you can buy it for $66,000 on Amazon. And I guarantee you that there's none of you can build, if you've never built a loop before, you cannot build your own loop uh, at this scale for $66,000. This includes salts already. So when you get it, you just plug it in the wall and it starts running. So when you're doing experiments with molten salts, you need a lot of, lots of thermocouples because you need to know what the temperatures are in different places because that has a big influence on what's going on in, in there. We built this system on the left there. It's a, it's a system just for plugging 64 thermocouples into your USB port and uploading the data to a website. You can have nice web graphs that you can watch, watch from at home or your whole team can watch even when they're not in the lab. It's just a very neat technology for enabling this or making this research easier. Before we built this ourselves, we, we used some commercial products, but they were not really up to what we wanted. So this is an example of stuff that we have built that maybe can help some of you guys move forward faster. Uh, there's other examples on the right side that some valves and some connectors. We've tested a lot of different connectors for pipes, for flanges. You know, you would think that you call some, some guy in the industry and they tell you, oh, you need this flange and it'll work. But when you start testing it for many hours with different temperatures and you, you cycle the temperature up and down, you know, some of those commercially available products are not made for these temperatures and these salts. And we ended up bu building our own valves and our own uh, connectors in the end, simply because it works better. This particular one is a check valve. It's a second generation check valve. And all these products are made out of stainless steel. Another product that we made is a, is a pump for circulating the salt. So one of the problems that they had in the MSRE uh, project and, and that many of you will have and that concentrated solar power plants have is that when you go to high temperatures and if you have any type of oxygen near that, you get corrosion. There's no way around it. So if you have drive shaft and a sealant around that, you've got to get leakage of, of gases or corrosion or something where we decided to build a pump that doesn't have any moving seals. So no dynamic seals, it's all static seals. This is the first version you see here in the picture. We're working on a next generation one with magnetic bearings, even so you don't have any uh, bearings that wear down over time. Of course, we need a dry salt. So when you, when you buy salt from suppliers, you usually get it as powder. Sometimes you get it mixed already, as other times you have to mix it yourself. These salts you get, they're never 100% dry. So you need to dry them and get all the oxygen and all the moisture out before you have something you, you can use to do corrosion testing, for example. So we found a way to do that. And I know they did that in Oak Ridge as well because one of our advisors actually used to work at Oak Ridge doing that back in the 60s. Redeveloped that technology and now we're able to make really dry salt in vacuum packs. If you don't have a lab where you can do that kind of drying of salts, you can just buy it directly from us and do the experiments in your lab. And then what else are we working on? Control systems and measurement technology and chemical separation and cleanups of the salt. And uh, these are some of the tools we have in the lab. We have a glove box where inside the glove box we have an oven, a vacuum furnace actually, so we can, we can melt samples in there and do experiments in the argon atmosphere. So again, we can do very uh, clean work on the salts or even on toxic elements. So that's a lot of help to us. And I mean, if you have some problems where you need to do work like that, but you don't have a glove box, contact us and maybe we can find ways to collaborate and work together. And eventually we hope that we get to design a full reactor or, or hopefully collaborate with some people who do that. We're also working on this LIPS measurement system. So Sid was talking about how in the past they didn't have the right measurement tools and, and sometimes even the, the measurement technologies broke down. But we believe in, in this modern world we have today that we need to be able to understand what's going on inside the reactor while it's running. 
And the LIPS technology is a very strong, powerful uh, technology for that because you, you shoot a laser and it creates a spark and you collect the light and you can do that through several barriers so you don't have to take samples out. And then every second you can get a chemical picture of what's in the salt. And by doing that, you can, uh, you can get an idea of corrosion and played out and, and wear down and the chemical composition of your salt uh, in the reactor while it's running. So it's, it's a very unique technology that is good for mold salt reactors. In Copenhagen Atomics, we're really eager to get more young people into this field. It's, it's so important. And uh, one of the things we want to offer is that if PhD students or master students need to do experiments on some of the equipment we have, Moltol loops or glove box or stuff like that, we want to invite you to come to Copenhagen and do some of our experiments in our lab. We cannot guarantee that we can give everybody a chance to do that, but send us an email and then we will do the best to try to figure out how we can get more uh, students involved in this, in this area. And then, of course, we, we have all these different gears that we have built for the stuff we are already doing in the lab today. And we can help you guys test components and materials, if that's what you need. Um, and we can even help you build, like, prototypes in your lab or non-fishing prototypes, because we've already built five loops now, and we, now we're starting to build them really <coughs> fast. We're also looking for people in the community that could help us with some of the things uh, that we want to do where we're not experts at all. And some of those areas are licensing in different countries. We don't know enough about that. So if there are experts in this area in the, in the community, we definitely want to talk to you. And also about processing monocytes uh, into uranium and thorium and, and rare earth. If there are experts in that, we want to talk to you. Um, and then finally, my last slide about the milestones that we have ahead of us. We have planned to do a test in our molten salt loop, a real thorium salt, a thorium containing salt. So this is lithium fluoride, thorium fluoride salt. So this is not irradiated. This is a, I have to say that, there's, there's only the radiation, radiation that comes from thorium. So it's, it's not, we're not uh, creating fission. Um, and then uh, also next year, we're talking with the Canadian Nuclear Lab to do some experiments with uranium bearing salts. Uh, and I hope that will come through next year as well. And then ne next year we also plan to start uh, running our loops 24-7 uh, for a whole year and see what breaks. Uh, we would like to get approvals next year to be able to ship these salt samples that I talked about before that are vacuum packed. So that we can also make salt samples for researchers and developers and ship them out to you guys so we can be a supplier of that. In our little company, it's a, it's a fairly big thing. We just this month, we bought 200 kilograms of thorium. Of course, we still have a long way to go before we have a molten salt reactor running on thorium. But we're trying to do the best we can, and that concludes my talk. <laughs>